Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Innovation Cafe session. Uh, we are here today to talk about jobs to be done, which is a very famous uh, method that probably now lives inside of um, Alexander Osterwalder value proposition canvas. So people probably not, don't talk about it uh, anymore. As, as in the past, people now talk a bit more about the canvas or the business model. But Sophia will probably tell us that we are uh, wrong and that we need to study a bit more about the JTBD um, technique before we embrace uh, a, a larger um, framework. Sophia is an expert in user research, research exactly. a good friend, and her energy is amazing. So I will leave it to you, Sophia, uh, to tell us a bit more about jobs to be done, but first of all, about you. Okay, so let me start by, by sharing that I don't believe there is this idea of being wrong and uh, you'll see throughout the presentation that I pay the highest respect for different authors that have created and are still developing jobs to be done uh, theory. Um, one of them is Alexander Osterwalder. So I'm just here to bring maybe more <clears throat> uh, clarity and more uh, and to to make the concept more more actionable, like ready to go uh, to practice. Okay, so a little bit about about my uh, not uh, not myself. I'll I'll leave it to, to in a minute or two. But a, a story about about me. So and what brought me to to jobs jobs to be then theory. So. I was a teenager and so we are talking like 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and each and every day I heard a, a, a phone call that my mother did to <clears throat> different, uh, sales, um, different sales teams, uh, because uh, just for you to have a little bit of context, um, uh, we're talking about shop, different shopping malls, uh, each of them with a specific store from one brand and um, a local brand. And over the days and the years, you, we all know that shopping malls are open uh, seven days a week. At the evening, there was this call, the call. So where my mother would uh, go one store, buy uh, one, another, and another, and another, and she would ask always the same question. How were sales days? So digital disruption were not uh, a topic at the time, at least in, in my context. Um, and um, so there was this, this call. And I found it very, very, very awkward because I come from a family that is uh, very pragmatic. But when it came to understanding why did that exact day for that shop was a good day for sales, a bad day for sales, an average day for sales? I mean, the reasons why were, were very uh, not, uh, were how to say, they weren't, um, they weren't like um, scientific, they weren't solid truths. So let's say, uh, oh, today is, uh, is, is sunny, therefore people went to the beach, therefore people uh, didn't came to, to the shopping mall, uh, therefore sales were, were not as good. But some months later, I mean, there was an amazing sunny, sunny day and then this was not a reason and then the, the sales performance was, was different. So I observed that unpredictability that happens in, this, in sales context uh, over and over the years. And not surprisingly, I am now uh, specialized in jobs to be done theory, which uh, explains exactly uh, why customers buy exactly in which day um, and in a specific store and exactly why not a competitor and this uh, specific, uh, and this in, in this specific uh, uh, brand, product, whatever. So just this was just a story to 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 <clears throat> to uh, wait a little bit for people to join. And right now I'm going to to share my screen. Okay, so Ugu, are you there? Could you help me sharing my screen? Uh... Siga, you go ahead to to leave for an emergency call, but I will. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Okay, but, so I'll but... start a little bit. 
Yeah, sure. Yes. Uh, so a little bit about uh, uh, about myself. You, yes, you, you go, Nuno. But, but you can share your screen, I believe. Um, you can you can follow. No, you are not. No. You don't have the. the I don't the have the approval, but uh, don't worry. Okay. I will. I will. I will keep with the, the presentation. So okay. first, I have a, a, a note which is encouraging you to to share. Um, uh, to share your experience throughout this, this talk. You'll see that this is more than a talk, this is an interactive exercise. So I'd like to encourage you to, to speak because we will all grow um, through this, uh, this experience and through this sharing. And then uh, I'd also like to encourage you to uh, write uh, down uh, when the moment comes because it can, it can help bringing some, some clarity and I'll, I'll notify it when, when the moment when the moment comes. So if you'd like to grab pen and paper, pen or paper, or uh, you can write it on the, on the computer, it's just a suggestion. Okay, so uh, our steps here, here today. So um, a little bit about me, then we will talk about, we'll start introducing the topic of jobs to be done in practice, which is in the end, the goal of this talk is to make jobs to be done more easy, and more actionable. So we'll start, uh, we'll start putting the concept uh, in practice uh, by understanding <clears throat> why you are here today. Uh, then I'll talk you about uh, the, or eventually my journey uh, through jobs to be done theory. Uh, then uh, I would say the, the juice of, of, of today's presentation is how to make then jobs to be done concepts uh, simple and easy. And here I will highlight the difference between the concept, jobs to be done concept, and then a framework or more than one frameworks, uh, because uh, for, for one hour, I'm really talking about the, the concept itself. Frameworks are, are, are bigger than this. Then we'll re reach conclusions together. So uh, here we can see how, how interactive I am, I am planning this, this session to be. And of course, then there will be a space for, for Q&A. Okay. So is, is all good? Are we all good? I don't know if we've, if, okay, good. I don't know if Hugo is back or whenever he's back. Uh, Noon, please, please let me know. Okay, so I'm a customer and user researcher. And indeed, what I do is discovery and, uh, uh, and generative research. Um, this is, which is uh, in the end of the day, finding unmet needs. Okay, but, uh, okay, I have been doing this uh, for five years, specifically with jobs to be done theory. Um, and uh, apart from that, I've also worked for uh, L'Oreal. I've done market research at L'Oreal. I've done market research for uh, Euromonitor International. And, uh, and then I have, uh, I have uh, different experiences right now. What I do is I do user research and business development at BGI. So BGI is a startup accelerator, Lisbon-based, but with a worldwide reach. And, um, and uh, I do user research and business development there. So we all, uh, a note here. So we, we all talk with very, I believe, and I do it also, complex terms. So customer research, user research, just within. So, and my role, so I have this, this value, this professional value, which is communicating in a way that is very clear, concrete, short, simple. So more than this, these very complex names, I, I, I prefer to say that I help companies acquire, acquiring new customers, knowing which new products or services to develop or which features. I help companies increasing retention in a way that is respectful also towards customers uh, because my mission is to make sure customers feel seen, listened and respected by companies. So whatever we, all we are talking here, we are always talking in a, in a mindset that brings both the company and the customer to the table, both are visible and we are really talking about win-win uh, situations. Um, and I also help companies uh, reducing churn, of course, in a, in, within a mindset of, of, of paying the highest respect 
uh, to customers and bringing the, the highest value. Okay, um, I would you say- You may carry on, Sphere. You may share the screen, please. Okay, okay, I'll, good. I'll give you permission to. Okay, great. Good. Second. Cool. Good. Are you all are you all seeing my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. So open discussion. Um, I'd like you to know uh, what is the main goal that you want to achieve in practice uh, with this webinar. I'll leave it to you. You already know that this is a super interactive session. Of course, there are no right or wrong questions. Um, so I'll I'll leave it to you. Who will be the the bravest one that will share the first insight? Well, hi, Sophia. Uh, my name is Ben Schmuck. I'm from Chicago in the in the U.S. So uh, and I. I use jobs to be done as a part of our, what we call our problem phase. Uh, and I, um, it often takes me a long time to explain what it is because, um, you know, there's the Clayton Christensen, uh, McDonald's milkshake story that I like mm -hmm. to tell, uh, but that usually takes me a while. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm looking for, I think a shorter, more succinct way to, to go about it. And I love your, your focus on respect for customers. I think that's really awesome. Thank you very much. I also think uh, that is uh, super interesting what you just shared. I, I do uh, hope that in the end of the session, you will take with you an actionable way to explain jobs to be done um, to uh, customers or organizations, uh, colleagues um, in a more uh, su succinct way. This, this would be a criteria of success for me of, of this talk. I really hope we will be able to do it. Okay, so can anyone share um, what is the main goal that you'd like to achieve in practice with this webinar? No right or wrong questions. This, I mean, I really encourage you to, to, to share because this is just warming up. We will have some exercises um, just in, in, in a moment. So please feel free. I understand that it might uh, be a little bit uncomfortable, but please speak. Uh, so that, hey, Sophia, can you yes. hear me? Yes, sure. Uh, Hi, uh, my name is Mario and I'm, I'm calling for, from Belgrade, Serbia. Uh, I work as a project manager in an IT company. And basically what, what drew me to this webinar and what I expect to achieve uh, through this webinar is first, of course, understand the concept uh, a lot better, maybe mm -hmm. learn something about the tools. And of course, but, I mean, this is like post seminar, uh, post webinar, sorry, of course, but uh, try to find ways to implement the concept in, in, in my company, within the company. Uh, right now, uh, our process of developing product, it's kind of a, it's a cliche. You have a client, they need something, then you develop something. But I want to go, I want to go a step further, do what the client explicitly wants, but also understand uh, some, some of their needs that, that are maybe left unspoken. So so to speak. So kind of anticipate what lies uh, uh, beyond what they already said and defined as their, their needs. Okay, super interesting. So yes, uh, in a way, it, I, I believe it can help, but you will be the one judging by, by yourself. Uh, jobs to be done, uh, as I said, so we have the concept and then we have frameworks. So I, I won't be able to make it actionable for uh, an entire framework, but for the concept itself, um, I, I hope that you can achieve, uh, achieve your goal. Okay, and I have designed it to, to help make it uh, more explicit. Okay, the job to be done and quicker to get there. Okay, uh, any other brave person who will share why? I'll step decision? in real quick. Okay. Because I'm uh, from Philadelphia area. My exposure has been to what I believe is a derivative of jobs to be done, 
which we used to call the JOC process, the jobs, the outcomes, and then the constraints that would prevent the execution of those outcomes and used it as an innovation development tool where you would get true customer um, um, input and actual design, which sadly is not always the, the process. Sometimes they design first and then they go test it and say, hey, why don't, you know, why aren't my customers really loving this? Well, they didn't understand the jobs. They didn't understand the dynamics of what the customer actually needed. They didn't need a blue knob. They needed something different. So it's to try to understand, and I think there's a lot of derivatives out there in the space, what the true jobs we done um, framework is, and then how perhaps you can use that. Okay. I won't be able to share what the true framework is because it's it's very uh, broad, uh, but I will focus on the concept itself because the moment you start, you understand the concept, there are more layers and more chapters that add value to it. Uh, I, I, I hope that you achieve your goal in regards specifically to the concept. Okay, so I, ha I, I had uh, some more, more questions, but for uh, time management, uh, for a time management purpose, I, 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 I think it is better to, to, to move. Um, okay, okay, a little bit of what I believe is the journey, the jobs to be done journey for anyone who goes through theory, but instead, oh, but regardless if this is the journey that anyone uh, goes through or not, definitely this was my journey. So here is <laughs> um, a representation of me over these five years going through theory and uh, having the, and being a researcher. I mean, what I do is I, I put theories into practice. So here is how I, how I felt uh, after reading everything about, that I found about trust with them and when wanting to go straight to practice as well as start sharing it with other people. So let me let me uh, share it with you. I'm sure we you all uh, somehow um, have gone through it. Uh, so people don't simply buy products or services; they hire them to make progress in specific circumstances. This is very well known uh, by Clayton Christensen, an absolute reference when we talk about jobs to be done. And once again, I you, I'd like you to know that I pay the highest respect to towards. Clayton Christensen and any other authors uh, in regards to this to this uh, topic. Um, it's just that I'm super excited with this idea of managing a company uh, through this lens. But if I want to uh, use it right here, right now, as a researcher, there, there's something that I still need. There's something that was missing. This is how I felt it. Okay. So then uh, once st I started, I, I kept reading people hire products to do jobs for them. Okay, so here's very clear, the focus isn't on the product. Uh, the focus is on something bigger, something higher uh, that the customer uh, wants and has to do. Then, okay, then you change, then I changed, uh, um, I changed author uh, in, in, in my pursuit of, uh, something actionable as impactful and groundbreaking as i already knew but also actionable and i found uh, i found uh, quotes like this the basic premise of jobs to be done is that people buy things to help them make progress and then this idea of progress was was very was a constant which i 100 agree and 100 understand but once again i mean how do i implement it right here right now Okay, so then uh, again, changing, uh, changing author, a job to be done is a statement that describes with precision what a group of people are trying to achieve or accomplish in a given situation. So here is the importance of context, uh, the, as well as the, 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 the focus on, on, on precision. Um, and I, once again, I 100% agree with all of these definitions. Um, here we are moving also from the, the, the idea of one customer towards the idea of a group of people. 
which is uh, in when we put the, the, the concept into practice, this is 100% true. So we talk about segments, we don't talk about one specific customer. What happens is that when we uncover uh, these uh, jobs to be done, we go one by one, person by person. But of course, this is a group of people. And then we also have this idea of trying to achieve or accomplish something. So this idea of progress and always the situation, so the context. So you can see that there are different authors and they also have similar, um, similar, uh, if you'd like, similar chapters that they touch when defining the job to be done. But once again, we have, we have this, this need to go to practice and I, I felt, as you, as you already know. Uh, and then it, becomes, it became even, even, even harder because job is a shorthand for what an individual really seeks to accomplish in a given circumstance. Okay, but I need to go to practice right here, right now. And then a job to be done is the process a consumer goes through when aiming to transform an existing life situation into a preferred one, but cannot because there are constraints that stop them. I would like you to know that I 100% agree once again, but it's not actionable. Um, people don't want to buy it. Then we go to Theodore Levy. People don't want to buy a quarter inch drill. They want to buy a quarter inch hole. But then, I mean, how do I know if, uh, how do I get to this insight? So this was this painful journey over, over, over the years. And then if we go even um, backwards in history, we would go towards something, we would find something like the value of a product from the customer's perspective is grounding is grounded in the use system rather than product attributes. I agree. I 100% agree. However, how can we make jobs to be done concept simple and easy? Because uh, we, I believe we are in a moment right now where it, where it already is known. We just need to create alignment. Uh, and the common language. So I said that here, I, I believe there was the juice <laughs> of this presentation. And my main conclusion over the years is, um, and I think it was Ben, Ben, I think you, you, you shared that you wanted to explain in a more su succinct way. So I found that instead of teaching, or it's not teaching, but instead of uh, uh, talking, communicating, as a teacher, as an education, as a consultant who generalizes the term, even if we can generalize it and it might be 100% true, of course, but if we, if we change the, the, the way we explain and if we explain it, putting the person in the shoes of a customer, I found that people understand jobs to be done much easier. Okay, so my goal is for you to understand if this, uh, if this helps you or not, understanding as well as explaining to others. So with no further ado, let's do a hands-on exercise uh, where you will be in, in the role play of the customer and we will find your job to be done as a customer. Okay, so oh, are you all hearing me? Are you all, all well? Do you have any question? May we start with the exercise? Yes, all good? Okay, so I would like you to think of a purchase, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'd like you to think of a purchase that you have made in the last 30 days. And it's very important that you think of a purchase of one item only. So imagine that you purchased, or if you purchased more than one product at the same time, I would like to focus on one product that you chose. Okay? Can we, uh, you don't need to share it. Uh, I'm just allowing time for all of us to have this very specific um, 
and this very specific uh, example in our minds, I already have mine. Okay, now I'd like you to uh, register uh, the answer to this question. What was the goal that you wanted to achieve in practice when you decided to purchase this item? I'm going to register it also. Okay, so. I'd say more 10 to 15 seconds. As you know, there is no right or wrong answers. Okay, so I'd like to ask if, if uh, we are all, uh, if we all have, have our answer to the question, what was uh, the goal you wanted to achieve in practice when you decided to purchase this item? Can you somehow signal me if, we are yeah could you we could you signal okay okay so i'm going to assume that uh that we have all done it and i like us to i like you to share your experience once again so more brave people or the same brave people please uh share your 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 answer in this format I bought, and then you say the product. And my goal was, the goal I wanted to achieve when I decided to purchase was, and you say the goal. So product, goal you wanted to achieve in practice. Who is the bravest one that will share in first place? Okay. I um, I bought a desk lamp because I wanted more even lighting on video calls. There we are. Okay, so you bought a desk lamp. I'm writing, it helps me. You bought a desk lamp. Could you please repeat? Uh, the goal I bought you a desk to... lamp yes? so that I could get more even lighting on video calls. Okay. Because otherwise uh, I'm a cyberpunk character, half in darkness and half in light. Okay. Uh, could you um, could you um, provide in one or two sentences a little bit more of context regarding to this call and complement your answer with so that. So before is context, then it's the goal, then it's so that. Uh, before is context, I had a tendency to talk to people online and late in the evening I would look like some sort of weird brooding sci-fi character and you know with better lighting so that I look more like a human being there we are very okay. well very well okay who is the next brave person that will that will share uh, yes yeah, Sophia that uh, will be me I am Abraham from the Netherlands um well uh, I uh, bought a pair of running shoes uh, to no longer have an excuse for uh, start running again. Okay, super interesting. Uh, okay, can you once again provide a little bit of context and complete the sentence with so that? Uh, the context is actually that I was uh, postponing uh, this whole uh, running stuff uh, uh, for quite a while, um, uh, even knowing it's uh, very important for well, my whole uh, well-being. Um, and uh, I noticed my shoes were kind of, uh, well, uh, worn off. Uh, and, and I thought, hey, I need new shoes because uh, I'm going to walk uh, with a with a a uh, bad shoe is going to cause me more problem than it benefits. Uh, so I needed to really uh, have a trigger. So I bought a pair of new shoes. So no longer have this uh, excuse and actually to become more 
healthy and fit and, and uh, a better person, uh, basically, yeah. Okay, how do we summarize this? So I, I, uh, I, regarding the context, I'm summarizing the context as postponing. So we have been postponing uh, doing exercise. Now, how do we summarize the, um, the goal you wanted to achieve when you decided? to uh, purchase these uh, running shoes and then so that can you help me um you're asking for me right yes 100 percent you um the goal to summarize the goal the goal really is to to be uh, more healthy and uh, be more uh, capable of, of, of well uh, uh, living my life better actually yeah because i know from before with an empty head after a run i perform much better and uh, i feel i feel better i am more uh, kind to to people uh, next to me so it's really important actually that i do this running but even if i knew it was so important uh, i kept postponing it and blamed it a little bit on my bad shoes that were old and worn off Yes. So that's okay. buying the shoe was really for me a trigger to, okay, no, let's go again. No excuse anymore. Okay. So avoid excuses to exercise. Okay. So as the context, we have a context of post postponing exercises. Then we have a goal, which is avoiding excuses to exercise so that I'm more healthy. Does this summarize? I think that's quite uh, accurate, yes. Okay, okay. It's yeah. normal that some detail is somehow missing because usually we do a customer interview uh, for, uh, I don't know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour. So we are just, uh, as, as I shared in the, in the beginning, we are doing like this, this short version, uh, but I'm happy that somehow we got to the, to the core. Okay, so here, yes? No, I said, all right. Okay, so okay. Have, yeah, okay. thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so right here, right now, uh, we have a job to be done, which is avoiding excuses to exercise so that I am more healthy in a context of postponing um, exercise. Okay, um, right now, uh, I'd like you all uh, to think of your own example and to imagine what would you do to increase sales by 10% if you were working for that company. So now imagine that instead of being in the role of the customer, you are in the role of the company to which you bought something. And based on your experience, how would you increase sales by 10%? I'll give you some time. Uh, so, Sophia, I have an example. It, it could be may even be a funny one for everybody uh, at the webinar. Good. Uh, since, since, uh, what we bought uh, recently, my, my wife and me, uh, it's, it's kind of a puzzle floor made of foam for our baby. She's mm -hmm. five months old. So basically we bought that kind of a floor uh, so our five month old baby can play around and basically to prevent her from eating the carpet or something so what i would uh, advise to the company making making those is to make them definitely make them bigger because five month five month old babies are a bit more flexible than we, than we expected so she crawls out of that pretty easily okay great thank you very much so now we can understand that instead of explaining the concept and waiting for people to on their own time to process, to digest theory, if we start as, as us with customers, with our own experiences, with purchases that we have already done, we can very quickly spot our job to be done as well as start thinking in ways 
of how could the company increase sales? How, what would I do if I would increase sales, if I would need to increase sales uh, by 10%? Okay, now here's another exercise. Uh, one second. Register your first alternative to the exact purchase that you chose. So imagine if you haven't chosen that same item, what have you done? Which was the question, the, the real question is, which was your alternative? And we need to, we need to bring room for the fact that there is an alternative or there isn't an alternative. So the alternative may very well be not purchasing. So I'd like to have the full spectrum. Okay. Do we all have our first alter our first alternative? I mean, if, if you don't mind, and if I'm not bothering. No, rest, not at all. You are very welcome. Uh, because this is it's a really simple example. This is why I gave it. It's it's something for the baby to play with, to play on. Um, exactly. Uh, our first alternative. So this uh, this exact uh, floor that we bought. It has 10 parts, uh, each of them 30 by 30 centimeters, right? But we had the, the first alternative was uh, to buy uh, uh, the same thing, 60 by 60 centimeters, but five parts. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was the first alternative, although none of them actually uh, uh, compared to each other, they're basically the same. When you put them all together, it's the exact same dimensions. So this is why we chose to have more parts uh, in smaller dimensions than fewer parts in bigger dimensions because this is a bit more interesting. I mean, it, it has some animal, animal print on it and something. So th this is why I chose this example because it had an alternative, not, not, a, not, not so much of a better alternative, but also because I figured out how to improve sales quickly. Okay, great. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, maybe in your specific case, I don't know, but I wonder if the next exercise will be challenging or not, but let's see. So now that you have a clear understanding of what you have purchased and your first alternative, I'd like you to think if you were on the company side, how would you avoid disruption? How would you avoid from the company side not to be disrupted by the alternative? So not to be overcome, surpassed. How would, what from, a, if you were on the company side, what would you do to avoid competition to somehow surpass or win? Uh, again, sorry. Again, sorry for, for being boring. No, uh, no, 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 no. Super, super, uh, super interesting. If if uh, if another company started making uh, these floors in bigger dimensions, I think it would be the only, basically, the only solution would be to make uh, to to uh, give the customers a discount. So, compared to each other, they're on the same level. Okay. Okay, so this is why I said that this example could be tricky in your in your um, in your uh, example. So, I mean, we can also decrease price, but I believe we can also push ourselves to think uh, in a different way. So, some examples are easier than um, than others, um, but uh, I'm just as I'm just thinking based on the example that that you share um if is there a way where communication uh, from the company side would help you improve uh, your journey towards this purchase i'm just thinking if communication instead of decreasing price 
could be a way of helping you do your achieve your job to be done better, faster, or quicker. It's just a question, and we are picking a very, very tricky example, I must say. Any thoughts? I mean, feel free to say yes or no. I mean, it may be the case that communication would have nothing to, um, to, to, to add, but I, I was thinking that based on your example, so you, you somehow said that you, will, you were a little bit uh, not satisfied because it was too, uh, too this, this, uh, this puzzle foam was too small. So, I mean, if you'd like to overcome, um, overcome competition, maybe it starts, I mean, thinking of uh, different, different sizes that would fit uh, different yeah. homes. This is just an idea. And the, really the goal here is to start making you think and we will reach conclusions in a minute altogether. Is there anyone that would like to share <coughs> another no. example? Please feel free. Well, uh, here I'm, uh, I'm again, Abraham. Um, the thing I noticed when I purchased the shoes was actually very interesting to uh, mirror myself. I had a few uh, shoes tried on with the, the salesman and probably he was also going in some direction with him himself. Uh, and at the end, I just tried a few shoes from a brand that I previously owned and had for many years. And I noticed with myself with the first three, four pairs of shoes I tried, I was also checking the price, uh, everything very picky because I don't have any experience with that. Then I tried the brand I already knew, seems I trusted that brand. Uh, and without asking any further questions, I just bought them because they fit good, they felt good. And already the trust was in my brain, I think for this brand. So maybe the communication part that you are referring to already happened before. Mm -hmm. that much strong that they convinced me already with the name the name they have so mm -hmm. i just bought them and went home happy great great um, communication sometimes plays plays a role and other uh, times is like the product itself yeah yeah sorry you go uh, just to if if uh, if you're if you're done then i can continue sorry for it sure okay so uh, in in my specific case in our specific case communication could be a part of the answer but not the answer itself because we're new parents so to speak it's a it's a five mean it's a first child and she's only five months old so we don't know a lot about this but communication could be a part of the answer in terms of maybe the company that we bought from uh, has more quality materials maybe the other company that has lower prices or bigger puzzle uh, blocks uh, has some uh, you know, I don't know, toxic materials or, or stuff. We don't know a lot, a lot about this. And in this way, communication could be the key, but uh, not the key, sorry, part of the solution, but not mm -hmm. the solution itself. But this, this particular, uh, I mean, th this is something that I'm familiar with running shoes. So I always, I always buy from the same brand uh, mm -hmm. because I had one uh, super experience with one of the brands then I just kept buying the same brand because they might, might not be, and certainly are not the prettiest sh running shoes or shoes around, but they're for running, uh, for me, uh, most comfortable, uh, really light. And when, I, when, I use it, when I'm using them, when I'm running, although uh, I have the same problem uh, with, with the excuses uh, right now, uh, I always feel, feel like, there's nothing on my feet. I feel a, a lot free mm -hmm. when running. That's and th those are two really, really different examples. So, well, in one case, communication could be uh, part of the solution, and in this other case, it's just like uh, maybe a word of mouth partially, and the and the other uh, and the other thing is uh, previous experiences. I guess. Okay. Good. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if anyone would like to, to uh, lead us through the journey of this was the product, I would increase, this was the goal, I would increase sales by doing this, 
and I would avoid disruption by doing that. Is there any brave okay. person? I could contribute. Okay. So what was the, the item that you purchased? So, yes, I purchased some hand sanitizer, which uh, sits on the desk in my uh, company, in my office. And I'm okay. um, very happy with the product. What uh, was the goal that you wanted to achieve? To comply with the current COVID-19 regulations. Okay, so that? Uh, so that I could ensure that my staff are safe. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more of context. I mean, I, I'm not sure we would leave, but <laughs> let me ask it <laughs> anyway. Sure, so I thought, well, if I put myself in the shoes of the manufacturer, who happens to be only one mile from my office, um, I um, to increase sales by ten percent, I would alter the dispenser so that the opening is ten percent bigger. So when the when I, when I dispense the product. 10% more would come out onto my hand. One second. Would it be respectful for, for customers? Let, go, let you go back to the customer role. Would it be respectful? Yeah. Um, yes, I think so. I don't think there's anything being covered up there. It's just okay. that I wanted to increase my sales by 10%. So. No, but imagine I, yourself from the customer, uh, from in the customer shoes. Okay. Uh, so, do so you really yeah. So as the customer, it means that my dispenser would would finish quicker, and I'd have to buy more quicker. So I'd have it would only if it was normally going to last me one month, then now it's going to last me, uh, you know, one point one month. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's going to last me less than one, one month, mm -hmm. uh, 0.9 months, because uh, because it's used up quicker. But um, I don't think that that would be disrespectful. Uh, okay, so let's say that uh, if the dispenser, uh, so if the customer uh, would like to quickly um, sanitize the entire hand. So my goal is always to make this respectful for the customer. So let's say that uh, the goal here would be to uh, thoroughly uh, sanitize both yeah. hands, really like, oh, uh, so yeah. in this case, okay. So in this case, uh, increasing 10% sales, uh, to increase 10% sales while making sure customers feel uh, respected, seen, listened, then you would uh, somehow increase a little bit the, the quantity that goes through the through the, the, the dispenser. Okay. Yeah, so normally the customer would be expected to press the dispenser once. I've actually got one right here. Uh-huh. So you just hit the plunger once and that's sufficient to clean both hands uh, thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. And what about the disrupt? I mean, the disruption question is much harder. I'm really pushing this uh, webinar. Um, so, if you, as the manufacturer, and now that you have the experience as a customer, but now in the role of a, ma a manufacturer, how would you avoid being disrupted? Do you have any idea? It doesn't need to pop out because this is hard, but uh, I'm just just pushing, pushing it. Do you have any idea? Even if crazy idea, because just to be then helps us avoiding disruption. Because the more we understand customers and their goals, uh, then we can understand that, you know, comply with current COVID-19 regulations. Yeah. It's bigger than sanitizer. Yeah, so uh, to avoid disruption, I would communicate with the customer 
that the new dispenser dispenses 10% more than it did before. Mm -hmm. um, and so that the customer knows, I don't think that that would stop the customer buying Bye. because they are using it quicker, mm -hmm. but it means that they could be more thorough in their application. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was just thinking now, uh, being the job to be then to comply with the current COVID-19 regulations, so make sure that everyone is safe. I mean, avoiding the disruption could, uh, could, um, could pass uh, by together selling uh, sanitizer and masks. I mean, for example, why do we go to the shopping mall and we need to go one place? And bring the sanitizer, then we need to go to the other place, bring the masks. I'm sure there are people that to get that at the same time in the same uh, purchase uh, when going to grocery store, I'm sure that they buy at sometimes they buy two things together. So uh, the, the the idea of this of this last question is is to understand that the moment that you you have clarity on your job to be done, which in this case was to comply with current COVID-19 regulations so that uh, everyone uh, is, is safe. Um, now, when we start to, to think, how could we avoid this disruption? We understand that the hand sanitizer is just a little, plays just a little role. So when we produce a product, our product plays a little role, a small role, in the customer life. Mm -hmm. So what play, plays a very big role in the customer life is the job to be done, which in this case is to comply with the current COVID-19 regulations to make sure that everyone is safe in the context of, of a pandemic. So this is what I, I, I was trying to, to, to deliver the message that uh, the moment you understand jobs to be done, we can start quickly uh, thinking how to increase sales, so in growth, how to boost growth in a way that is respectful, as well as how to avoid being disruptive. Okay, so I've already done, we are reaching the end, I've already done this, um, this, uh, how do I say this? Um, this difference, I've already talked to you a little bit about job to be done here. I mean, there are more chapters when we analyze the job to be done than the ones that we have gone through here. But and this is why I, I, I decided the topic to be about the concept itself and not as a framework, because frameworks usually bring other, uh, other uh, chapters to the table, which are super helpful. Uh, anyway, um, I'd like us all to reach conclusions together. So, oh, sorry, <laughs> this was my conclusion. Let me not share it right now. Okay, so any other brave person that would be able to share a conclusion uh, that you have reached uh, during this, this session? Please feel, feel free, you know, I pay you the highest respect. You are super brave for talking in a live webinar like on the spot. Well, I, I so, think, sorry, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Don't carry on, no, no, go ahead, please. Thanks. Uh, I mean, the, this is not something that's revolutionary, what I'm about to say, but I think empathy plays a really big part in this concept and this ability for us uh, to walk in our client's shoes, I guess. Great. This is one of my conclusions exactly. If you want to, uh, if you are the CEO of a company, I mean, put yourself in the shoes of you as a customer, not necessarily as a customer of your own product, because it's hard. Somehow, you just think about the product. <laughs> when, when we go to customers, I mean, this is not uh, their, their main focus but just think of yourself as a customer in your daily life and be aware of the difference of the goals you want to achieve so that in a specific context so be aware of this and then and look at the product and you will see that we are talking about different things and the product plays, plays just a small 
just a small uh, role in, in something higher, which is the job to be done. Uh, and in order to boast, in order to both increase sales as well as avoid disruption, understanding, uh, understanding the reality, the reality through customer eyes will really, really help you. Okay, any other conclusion that any brave person would like to, to share? I'd like to go now, if that's okay. Sure. Hi, Sophia. I'm Giri, uh, also an MMK, so nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. So I've been thinking about this and we've been taught about this concept and the willingness to buy for a consumer is something we empathize with. Mm -hmm. And if, if we're talking as a company, we also, I feel like uh, that's something I've been passing on to my team is that we also need to have jobs to be done. For <laughs> another concept called willingness to sell. So how we can perfectly empathize with that probably comes through that. And that's an exercise we've been trying. And it's, it's a different kind of job to be done in that they need to be complementary, but it's an exercise that's been working well. So, so that's one of my conclusions and it's a reaffirmation from what you've uh, taken us through during the seminar. Okay, I've never thought about this expression, willingness to sell, but this is exactly, this, is, this really is the, the issue is like, for companies to, to, to look at the markets through jobs to be done lens, there is, there, there is a need for, for the, the company and the, the, high, the high end. To, there's, there, there's a need to see reality through this lens. But he called it amazingly, like willingness to sell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I, I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, any other brave person to share any other conclusion? If any. Well, uh, Sophie, actually, uh, when I hear the several examples that we're giving, um, and also then the, the, you triggered me with uh, how to do it with respect, um, I thought, wouldn't it be nice if uh, this uh, uh, sanitizer seller uh, uses Arthur re really as, a, as an ambassador for his product to make sure that he will pass the message on to his neighbors, like, if you need sanitizer, this is the guy you need to go to. So then you, he will increase his sellings maybe more than 10% in a very, uh, I think, a respectful way. Yes. I love to see that this idea of increasing, increasing sales in a respectful way for customers that somehow this is uh, being uh, received and uh, matured because this is really how I'd like to influence uh, people is, is, I believe it's all it's good by increasing sales. I mean, perfect. What is, is there any problem? Of course, there's no problem. As, well, as long as we put the customer into the equation and as long as we are serving them and what you are serving them better, you know, uh, and better can, can become very different things. Um, but uh, when, we are, when we are talking both about increasing sales as well as avoiding disruption, there is like an enormous, like almost infinite <laughs> way, <laughs> ways uh, to do it. Uh, so your idea is, is super valid. And then we would like to, to we would start uh, with prototyping, testing, probably would go again to customer interviews. So there is a whole process. Um, and this is why I, I make the, the point that uh, there's a framework. And even bef after frameworks, there are processes. But sure, of course, uh, that could be done to increase sales uh, potentially more than 10%. Thank you very much. Okay, so we are really, really reaching the end. So my fi final note is that, I mean, the product is a means to help customers achieve an end. Uh, this really is the thing. And what happens is that when we are from the company side, when is, we see from the company side, we think product, 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 product. And we, when we look at the sales report, and even if we sell 1 million products, especially especially when we sell these kind of numbers 1 million products sold in 3 months we somehow become woo 
we are the best. <laughs> I mean, congrat congratulations for these amazing numbers, but have a reminder that this is not um, about the product. This is about the goal that customers want to achieve in a specific context so that they will do something higher and more important. So I, am, uh, I have this idea that a sales report should have the product, the job to be done, and then the sales numbers. So that uh, when you look at numbers, you know, oh, this product is serving this job to be done, and we are selling these numbers and our revenues are this. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm quite active. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, we are uh, on time. Um, right now I'm, I'm here for questions. If you'd like to, to if you need to go, I mean, I 100% understand, please, please feel free. Okay, any question? Just um... Sophia. It's it's all about uh, uh, fulfill some need from the customer, uh, and the, the product by itself it's not important. It can change. It can it can mutate the same product, and it, the only purpose is to fulfill that need. Yes, it's about it. It's about the the job to be done. Exactly. This is really about customers. This is not about companies. Companies yeah. are a way to help cu customers achieve something higher than products or services. Thank you. Okay. Cool. A thank you, Sophia. Thank you very much. Any question? Well, we, I don't know if it helps anybody. I, I just put a link in the chat box. Um, we, we, in our organization, we did a, a webinar recently based on the how, how generosity um, oh. um, as a culture uh, uh, generates um, so how, how generosity breeds innovation um, oh. and and that's that's something that we've proved and that involves the customer and the supplier oh, and so um, it's very very powerful um, Super interesting. So that's a that's a recording of a uh, a uh, webinar we did with a professional uh, April Sprints, and uh, I'd just like to invite members here tonight just to visit it if they do have a few minutes. It's very interesting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Definitely, I I will I will have I will take a look. Okay. Welcome. Any question or any thought? So Ben, I think it's Ben, one second. Ben, so your goal to achieve with this, I don't know if Ben is still uh, here. Ben, uh, your, your goal for today was to explain in a more succinct manner jobs to be done. Um, was somehow this session helpful? Not sure if, if Ben is, is here. Okay, probably not. Okay. Okay, so I'm assuming there is no, there is no more questions. Am I right? Am I wrong? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Any insights? It's no. been very interesting. Thank you, Sophia. Okay, thank you very much. Also. Thank you okay, time. so Nunu, I'll leave it to you. <laughs> it was a great talk and insight. Thank you, Sophia, and everyone else. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your participation and uh, let's have another Innovation Cafe soon. And uh, well, thank you all and uh, be safe and have fun tonight. Anywhere exactly. where you are, always happy. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the okay. energy. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you, good night. Bye. 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 See you all. See you all.